So what we're going to do today is we're going to see an eclectic selection of endings and compositions. Some from real games, like this one, and some from uh, compositions. And all of them have left a really serious impression on me at one time or another. Some of them I've seen relatively recently, within the last few years. Some I've seen many years ago, even when I just started playing chess. But all of them, in one way or another, really affected me. And I have to tell you that whatever you'll see in all those endings, that things, those things happen in real games. First, the games, of course, prove it by, by definition. But even those that are um, not just compositions, some motif, even not in, in the most beautiful way as it's shown in the uh, composition, they happen in games. Happen in my games, happen in games of my students, help me analyze, help me get better. I really believe that looking at those things is really, really worth it. So let's start with an example from here. Again, we're doing it without any special order. You'll see that you'll see some examples of um, tactics in the end games, some example of Zugzwang, some exam example of uh, simplification and tricks, all kinds of motifs that are not necessarily your everyday's bread and butter. Some are simple. So we have this kind of a position with white to move. And when you look at the ending, it's not an easy ending by any means. It's a pretty tough ending. Sure, you have a rook against a bishop, and usually in a position with, two pawn, with pawns on both sides of the board, that should be very strong for the rook. The rook is much more agile than the bishop. However, the number of the pawns is very minimal. You can see that black has serious pawns on the A file, and the king is already close to the G pawn. So when you look at it, you think to yourself, how to, how to win it? Because for example, rook takes A5, king G3, and you lose the G pawn, after which the H pawn is going to give you a little bit of hard time. So that's pre pretty much an instant draw. However, you have to be sometimes imaginative. Even in reduced material positions, you really have to appreciate all the variables in the equation. And here, I want that you, I, I prefer that, that I will always show you the solutions that I want you to solve because some of them are really convoluted and even if you see the first or second move, you might still not see the rest. Not in this example. This example is pretty straightforward. So, but what can you tell me about this position? Like, can somebody say anything about this position? What looks Anything that gives you an idea of what to do if you were white? Like what's worth mentioning? Other than the fact that it's a rook versus bishop, black has a pawn. The king is in checkmate. Black's king. The, the black king is boxed in. Yeah. That's right. The, back, the black king is boxed in. And that is a real big factor. And that's exactly what happened in the game. He maximized that idea. He played rook g6. And at first, it looks like something a bit crazy. Because when you look at the position, you think the A-pawn is going to start running. And what mate? G3, king, h3, there's no mate. However, after a4, king comes on the dark squares. a3, king f4, a2. Now it looks even more dire than before. Because how to stop the pawn? You have to go rook a6, after which maybe even b4. Doesn't look good for the white player, but the king is already in a mate net. So, rook g3, idea rook h3 checkmate. So no time to queen. And the problem is that after bishop e6, he simply played check and mate. Beautiful resourcefulness. I mean, and I'm telling you, there are many, many compositions in game like this. And I can, I'm telling you, in my students' games, in games of people that I looked at in my games, there were always motifs like this. Not always did they materialize themselves, because maybe the other side also know not to enter a certain variation with that. But these things just happen. So yeah, white won nicely. Let me show you another example from a real game. This time it's a queen ending. We're going to have several queen endings uh, on our hands. Because queen endings are really rich with all kinds of tricks and tactics. And there's one of them that if you don't enjoy that, I'm just going to quit just because I think it's just so beautiful. This one is just very clever. So. But you look at the position, at first glance, you think that the first player, white, has really good reasons to be happy. He is offering a trade of queens. And it looks like black is now like down if you do and down if you don't. If you trade, you will lose to the past a pawn. That's easy. If you move your queen, I'm going to take queen takes f7. That cannot be good news by any means. And if you try to check me so that neither one happens, I'm going to go king f6. And again, it looks like white is super active here. So. At first glance, you think black is really in trouble. But again, a little imagination, and black has a forced win, actually. 
in a very beautiful forced win. So what happens? Again, you have to notice, like before, that the king is a bit short on squares. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, all kinds of squares that he can go to, but many of those eight squares that usually go to, they're either occupied, illegal to go to, yeah, basically only has one move. <coughs> also, the queen is undefended, so it needs a little babysitting. So, black played, f6 check, obviously. And now, of course, queen takes f6, queen g3, with a better game. So, you cannot take king takes because you lose the queen. That makes our task very easy. King to g4. And now he played queen g2 check. Again, black plays the obvious move, and white doesn't have much to think about. He played here. F5 check. Only one move, unless you want to lose your queen. And now he simply seals the deal with taking away the last escape square. He plays e5 check and resigned. Because if king takes, you lose the queen. If pawn takes, mate. Really brilliant. Just so nice and so aesthetic. And again, something that repeats itself in games. This idea really happens a lot. What, what is like you block an escape square when people when pieces take um, the last escape square of a king or block a piece, a piece that really wants to defend. <clears throat> so again, a very, very aesthetic ending. And just when black looked like he was on the critical list, he actually has a forced win. OK. Now it's going to be a bit messy because I haven't ordered it quite properly. But nonetheless, we'll look at all of them. It's still nice. OK. This is, this is a favorite. <coughs> White's on the move. What to play here? Again, at first you think to yourself, well, that can be that difficult, right? Because White is up a knight for a pawn. But we already know that king, rook, and knight versus king and rook is, is not winning, unless you are really clumsy. And there are all kinds of threats. So what to do? So the first move is obvious. You have to take the pawn. If you don't take the pawn, then what are you going to do? Because I'm going to take your pawn. And otherwise, if you advance it, my king comes to it. And you have more losing chances than winning chances. So first takes. And then check. And now what to do? At first glance, again, we want to play king g2 intuitively, right? But the problem is that after king g2, takes, takes, and king c6, you cannot defend the pawn anymore. There is no way. There's no, the knight cannot stay on g5. If he could have stayed on g5, he would have done it. But if you go knight f8, I'm going to go king d6, king e7, and the pawn has to be let go. So this is the problem. However, white doesn't have to play king g2. He's going to play king f2, x clan. Exactly. Looks like a crazy, crazy move. But he, this is such an aesthetic win. And again, several motifs that just keep repeating in endings in real games. So what else? And now here, obviously. OK. And now, how many of you have ever seen that famous ending by Barbier and Saavedra, where you have pawn, king and pawn versus king and rook, and the king and pawn win against the rook? You push the pawn, and the rook keeps checking, and the king has to go to the right place. Then you have to make a rook. If you haven't seen it, I'll show it to you very briefly. I thought everybody showed it, and you'll immediately recognize it. But actually, you'll see the motif here. But this is the same kind of a motif. So rook check. And again, you have to be really smart about where you're going. Because if you go to the g file, I go rook e2. So you have to go king f3. If you enter the, a file, the e file, I'm immediately going rook h5 and rook e5 when you queen. So you can never go to the e file. So he needs to go king f3, climbing. So check, same thing, check, same thing, check. You must check. And again, you have to be very careful. You can go to f7. You can go to the g file because rook e6. So now, time to go back. And again, king e5, rook h1, and the rook is coming to the e file to skewer the, the pieces. So watch what happens here. Here, here. This is already not, not winning. Here, here. This tricky motif keep repeating of rook skewering the king and queen. Just beautiful. I, I really find that amazing. So again, utter accuracy is needed. And king f5, the king is going back. 
So check. Yeah, notice there's no knight g5, rook h8, and you don't queen. So back, you can never go to the g file or the e file. So here, 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 here. Now you go there because there's no check. You cannot go, you cannot go rook. If there was rook h minus, then you could have done it, but there isn't. So check, and now he goes this way, zigzagging. Check, check, check. And now, if rook h1, you lose because knight f6, rook here, check, and knight e5. And I'm building a bridge and the pawn queens. Nice. So alternatively, you have to play check. And again, you think dead end. If you go to the seventh rank, the rook takes the knight and pins you. If you go to the e file, I'm going to go rook h1. If you go king d5, I'm going to keep checking you. However, Knight f6, brilliant, just a brilliant ending. Yes, now, if you go rook h8, I'm going to go knight d7 and knight f8, cover the check, and I'm going to queen my pawn. So you must accept. And now we dance back. Back, 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 back. That's it. And wins. Just phenomenal. I mean, this is like, think about somebody composing it. It's just really beautiful. And let's see if, I, if, I, is, if he's going to let me build a new position or no. That's it. This is, this is, it's actually, it started as a white to move and draw, and black draws, and then somebody, some reader that saw it in a magazine in the 19th century, uh, found a win. So now it's named for both the composer and the reader that found the win. And the, the solution is c7. Why is it chirping? Uh, sorry. Great. So c7, and now you must give check. You have no other move. So check, king here. Again, I can never enter the c file. Can you go to go down and behind? So check, king here, check, king here, check, king here. Now you think, easy, so nice, but wait. Rook d4, and that was the initial composition. And it was to move and draw, because after c8 queen, I'm going to go rook c4 check. The queen is to take stalemate. Can you see? If queen, check, takes, stalemate. But he decided to, hey, how do I make a rook? <laughs> <laughs> That's really annoying. OK, how do I make a rook? Uh, it should be up in the settings at the toolbar. Like, there's Never queen, right? We know it's OK, well, we'll pretend this is a rook. I have to make a rook. Now I'm threatening checkmate here. So you have to go rook here. And then king b3 wins, because I'm attacking the rook and threatening mate here. So imagine again, this is a rook. So white wins. So I really said, hey, it's not a draw, it's a win. And now the ending is named for both of them. So yeah, very brilliant ending. OK. Next. OK. This is another one of those positions where it's like, you really have to use imaginations. And I can tell you that this is, again, something that in the game, I will never forget. When I was in Holland in the tournament, there was a game between David Navarra and Luke Van Wely. And also, they had this, the same kind of idea. And I knew this, uh, of this composition. I immediately said how black is going to win. And everybody thought I was a genius. And then I said, well, it's just a known composition. And of course, he won exactly like that. So, but this, this is a draw. But the winning idea is because he didn't have a draw in that game. So why to move? You notice that this is really, really tough. It's looking just very, very unpleasant. What are you going to do? If you go, for example, king e6, you have to go king g8. That's the brilliancy. But if you go king e6, then here, and now doom. If you go here, I'm just going to go king e3. Or h4, is just all, everything is winning. So that's bad. Or if you go, let's say, um, where else can you go? If you go rook f7, I'm just going to queen. Uh, if you go, sorry, if you go here, I'm just going to go here. And now the king can cross. And I'm just going to queen whenever I feel like it. And then my pawn is going to make another queen. So doesn't look good for white, right? But white plays king g8. What a counterintuitive move. But you must go behind the rock. So h4, what else? If your king reveals itself, I'm just going to check it forever. If the king goes, eight, uh, goes out, then check. And you eventually have to go back. So rook h7. <coughs> Again, if the king reveals itself, we're just going to check it until it has to hide behind the pawn. So now comes this. 
And in the aforementioned game, if you want to see it on the database between Navarra, it was Vanueli White against Navarra, I believe. Also, a move like this, that was the winning move. And the point is that after takes, King G2. And the pawn queens and the rookies attack. However, in this composition, the difference is, and this is really good to know, because this can happen, and it, I've seen it happen in queen versus rook ending, that the rook comes here, and you must queen, but this is a draw. You cannot escape it. Here, you can never go to the F file, obviously. And no matter how much you zigzag, like let's say you go here, check, here, here. I'm always going to have these two moves because my king protects them, so draw. Despite the advantage of a queen. So again, if you look at this position, it's just really fantastic. It looks so lost because the king is such in a bad place in F7. However, if the king goes, again, the counterintuitive move away from the pawns, Every person in a blitz game would have played king f6 or king e6, and of course, losing. All right. Our next example from a game again. Oh, this is beautiful. Maybe I should have kept it to the end, but I think you'll enjoy it anyways. So in this position, white is up a pawn, and he, of course, he wants to win. I mean, he also is kind of a dominating position. But how to continue? Perpetual, he has, but that's not enough. So watch what happens in this game. This is a game with all kinds of... Mi Black really tries his best, but alas, again, the beauty of chess wins. So, first move, f6. Okay, they analyze this variation, which is really kind of worth mentioning. If here, check, here, then he goes king h7, and draw. Yeah, if you go queen, h, queen h5 is just bad, but here. And of course, that's it. After check, I just take it. So, f6. Okay, kind of an obvious move in my opinion, because what else can you do, right? <coughs> and now, of course, the, the pawn ending is lost. And if you play pawn takes, I'm going to go king g6. And you're going to get mated, because you have no checks. So black plays the only move that he has left. King h7. Very, very important move. And now, amazingly, white blundered. He played f takes g7, after which it was a draw. But what he could have done, it's just like, it's really incredible. After this, I'll show you the game first. Queen f7. Stalemate. If you don't take, you lose. If you take, it's stalemate. He just forgot about that. But he could have, he could have done something really, really neat. He could have done, never mind the queen ending after queen f5 wins. This is much nicer. After f7, with the threat of queen f5 check winning immediately, now he tries queen e5, the only try. But it's brilliant. If queen takes queen, g6 checkmate. So you can take and you can, but look what happens. g5, and now queen takes, f8 knight <laughs> wins. Just like, think how many, how few pieces and, and what, what wealth of information. It's like every move is a message. Like I, I, I advance my pawn, you try to sack your queen, I advance my pawn, you try to sack your queen. I give you my queen, and then I win it back. Just fantastic. And again, if you think that there's other moves after g5, if um, there's just no checks, that's the problem. You cannot play g6 check. You cannot play queen e2 check. Just brilliant. Just fantastic. Really, really a fantastic um, ending. OK, next. OK, this is again the idea of domination in the end game. Of course, white is losing materially speaking. However, you will see that he has chances. Again, I have to say that every time I look at this position, I swear I'm having like five different deja vus about my own games. Like from different tidbits. Not that something happened that encompasses everything that we see here, but the motifs that we see here is like remind me of all kinds of things that happen. A queen that's on h3, pawns that are doubled here, uh, a, a material deficiency, a, an unsafe king, all this we see often. So when you look at the position, you think to yourself, white is nearly lost. Really, because the queen is very, very strong. If the queen was, let's say, on e5, then it would have been very fair for white to just resign. He's going to lose all these pawns. And if he doesn't lose a piece or a rook in the process, it's a miracle. So, however, the queen is not very well placed. And as you can see, of the million moves that it has, it doesn't really have many. Can't go here, can't go here, 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 here. Can't go here, here, here. Basically, you have one move. You can't even go, well, you can go here, but like two moves. But you will see that this is quickly taken care of. So, knight e6 check, an obvious first move. King e8, check, 
Again, an obvious move. And now, if you go king to d7, then rook f8 wins just prosaically. Because the queen is now, you're going to get into a zugzwang here. The queen has no legal moves except for losing itself. I'm protecting my f1, I'm preventing queen f5. I'm just going to run you out of moves. Okay, and I'm threatening knight f4 or knight g5, and you're just going to lose the queen. So that's easy. So he tries his best, and he goes here. Okay, so white plays the only move that he has left, rook b7. If you go rook f8, immediately, oops, sorry. Then immediately you're in trouble because my queen is going to sack. I'm just going to take here. And after this, horrible. Horrible. So he goes check on b7. King has to go to e8. If you go king to f6, then check. The rook is immune because of knight g5, fork <coughs> king and queen. You'd have to go here. And then a4. Again, I'm going to zugzwang you. Here, here. You run out of moves. Eventually, you have to make a move and you lose everything. The king, if the king takes the pawn, the knight f4. And the king is still made and the queen is stuck. So when I run you out of pawn moves, you lose the queen. So he's going to try a different move, obviously, after this check. He goes king e8. So perpetual we have. Already we feel very good. We're not losing. But again, we feel that with the queen on h3 so stuck, there's got to be more. And of course, there is more. And again, the tactic work. Rook f7. The purpose is to keep the queen locked in. Can't take the rook. And again, trouble. After h6, we just play... Okay, here there's some tricks that we still have to avoid. Watch this one. Because it could be a mutual zugzwang. So for example, if rook f4, king e7, a3, a5, a4, king here, rook here, king here. Stuck. There's just no, no good move now. So, after rook b7, king e8, rook f7, h6, simply rook f8 check, king d7, because king e7 just knight f4, traps the queen, a3, a5, a4, king e7, knight f4, wins, traps the queen. Just fantastic motif of domination. The queen has so many legal moves, but doesn't really have them. <coughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. If queen d7, I should have mentioned that, of course, but of this. Let's see. Checkmate. The program is always vocal about giving checkmate. So, yeah. All right, next topic. Again, this topic is pretty well known because there's a very famous blitz game between Lasker and Capablanca, maybe, or I think it was Lasker Capablanca. So you have this kind of an ending. Looks really strange, two knights against the rook. And OK, of course, white is not worried about losing. He can just take the pawn. But if he takes the pawn, knight d5 check, and he loses the rook immediately. So you think to yourself, OK, what can I do in this position? What move or moves do I have to do? And if you just move, my knight will take the pawn on b5. Then the other knight is going to join him by coming out. It's going to be a very simple um, draw. But we want to win with white. So again, it takes a dosage of imagination here to understand the first move. But rook a8, probably the most counterintuitive move in the position. And again, watch the examples that the, that the commentators give. We already said about rook b6, knight d5. If here, 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 looks pretty nice. However, check, and here, you're not going to win this one. At the very least, I'm going to sack one knight for the pawn, win, win the pawn on b3 with the other knight, so you are. However, watch how beautiful this is. Rook a8. Well, your knight is a bit trapped, so you've got to take. And now, king d8. Up two knights, but the pawns and the king, again, a, a very nice example of domination. After king here, here, and you're just not in time. Let's say king here takes... You have three pawns, so at least you're going to end up with one good one. So, Notice how annoying it is when the king can't cross. He has to go like here. And 
Yeah. Okay. Here's another ending that comes a lot in chess games. The motif definitely happens so much. Bishop against knight. Of course, the bishop is much better than the knight, also kind of semi-dominating him. And especially with the pawns are, there's a pass pawn, like in this case, h pawn. And white to move and win. Still, it takes a little bit of creativity here to uh, bring the point home. So it's uh, <coughs> what to do. The first move is obvious. You have to push the pass pawn. If you don't push the pass pawn, I'm just going to go something like f5. If I get to play f5, of course, it's going to be like pretty much a quick draw. So h5. Now you are running out of choices because I'm very fast. You don't have, to, you don't have time to play um, king, king f8, h6. You're going to be stuck immediately. So you must play f5. And white, of course, pushes the pawn. And you must chase it. And of course, if I push the pawn, you block me. So I have to take. So up to here, it's normal. And again, this motif is very, very important to remember. That king here and king that is just completely dominated by two pawns. You can never take this one because this one runs, and you can never ever approach the other. That means that the king is paralyzed. <coughs> there is a beautiful example of this, of an ending like this that starts with some position to get to that, and the opponent has three passed pawns on the other side. So imagine that there are three black pawns like here, here, and here, versus the king itself, and with accurate play, the pawns just can't make it. Eventually, you just force them to create some sort of a triangle, and you stand on b5, and black cannot move his king. He has to give all his pawns away. Of course, white is just winning. It's like two pawns against five and wins. I remember I was seeing it as a child. It was amazing. OK, now, of course, the king can't move. So knight a6 is the only move. Not really much, not much else to, to see. So king b5. Again, looks like, whoa, what are you doing? You're going to lose your, knight, you're going to lose your bishop. But you'll see that again, domination. If my knight is allowed to go like out, I'm going to easily, I'm going to just go like here, and then here, and then here, block the pawn, then I'm going to take all pawns. Easy to run. So you got to be brave and give the bishop. And he has to take it, because where is he going to go? Knight b8, I'm going to go take that knight without any respect, and then just win the ending. So knight c7, king has to go to c5. Notice that even still, there are, there are tricks. If you rush to go here, takes. And after this, king takes. Why? Because if h7, knight f6 check. Fork the king and the pawn. So you, it's amazing how many nuances there are in those compositions. So the right move is that you have to be patient. You have to play king c5. And only after takes, well, we'll see the other variation. If knight a6, king c4, knight c7, bishop c6, the knight is dominated. Here, 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 here. What a beautiful, even, even to the last move. Again, bishop is the rock, with the wrong rook pawn. The bishop is the opposite square. But again, you get to a position where the king cannot move. You can push your pawn, and I'm just going to run with my king and stop it elegantly. Beautiful. Just fantastic. So, yeah, so after king c5, he has to take. And now, king c6. That's it. No moves. If you go knight g7, I go h7. If you move your king, I'm going to go h7. And any knight move elsewhere, is just gonna, he's just going to lose the knight. So just again, a beautiful idea of domination. Look at this domination. You're up a knight. All I have is two pawns. You can take one of them. And you can't take anything. You can't get close to my other pawn. And my king is so out of the picture, you see. Just when I look at those positions, I find it so aesthetic. And again, these things, like I said for the 10th time, these things really happen in games. All right. I think I have two more examples, three more examples for you. Let's take a look at this one. This one, some of you might know it. This is really kind of a messy position with all kinds of, the behind the scenes variations are maybe no less beautiful than, than the actual solution. So why to move, what to do? Even though you're up a rook and a knight, obviously the black pawn is about to queen. And you have some urgency. But again, you can notice that with the white king on d3, the black king is a bit cramped. Maybe you can take advantage of it. So let's start with the variations. 
The correct move, rook c2 check. If you start with this, I queen, knight d3 check, king a2, not king b1 because rook c1, and then you should see, you should see the start, again, the behind the scene variation. Here, by the way, king a2 just immediately is winning. But if you play king b1, rook c1, here, check, here, have to guard the queen. Takes, takes, here, the pawn must advance and mate. We saw that last week. Those of you who attended last week might remember that I showed some motifs like this. Amazing. Even without pawns, even without pieces, the knight against the pawn still mates. So, okay. Therefore, we have to start with rook c2. Because, yeah. And then, now, again, you have to be very accurate. King b3 is the only move. If you go king b1, the knight goes to a2 or d5. is the same thing. And after queen, mate. Or not made, but like takes, takes, here, here, and wins. So, because rook is coming the other way. So, he plays king b3. Only move. Now you must queen, because as we already seen, I think, in the other variations, right? We saw this variation here, here. Looks familiar. So we've seen that. So he has to queen. Takes. King b2. And now, only one move. And you think to yourself, okay, obviously I have to move the rook on the first rank, but what does it matter? Why should I go rook f1? Why not e1 or g1 or h1? Looks like, what can be the difference? The difference is that when black queens, and he's going to have moves along the a file, you have to be able to put the rook in a place where the queen cannot dominate it. So, watch what I'm talking about. The rook goes to f1, only move. And here's the reason. a2, king c4, queen, what else? I'm about to go knight d3 check. Queen, I go check, only move, check, only move, check, and now, king a3 just forks the king and queen, King c1, okay, very easy, knight a2 check, king b1, king here. The queen on a1 doesn't look happy. So you basically have to go after this check, you have to go king b1, king b3, and now you understand why the rook is on, on f, was in the f file. Because if the rook was elsewhere, then my queen could have played either here or here, and, if the, and then I would not allow you to checkmate me. Now it's just over. Just wins. Pretty impressive. I mean, when you think about the, the starting position, sure, you're up a knight and, and a rook, you think to yourself, yeah, that should be enough. But those pawns are really menacing. But there's like so many different cute mates, again, with just absurd situations. The knight mating the king. Those of you who came late should see it. It's really, really nice. After check, here, here. Now the, the variation behind the scenes. King b2, here, queen, check. Check, takes, and here, wins. Yeah. <coughs> okay. I think we have two more positions to look at. This I remember seeing a long time ago, and this really floored me. I couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, this is like, of course, I was very chess naive at the time. Like, I only knew things that are obvious. But when I looked at this position, I just I saw the solution. I didn't have a chance to solve it, of course. And I'm thinking to myself, huh, what? Not possible. But nowadays, maybe a little more refined with much more literature, maybe some of you might come up with it. So this is a way to move and win. And of course, generally speaking, rook and bishop versus rook is a theoretical draw, especially when there's pawns on the board even easier. So if you go with the obvious, let's say bishop b5 check, king d8, rook d7 check, king c8, you're nowhere because I'm going to go f5 and my rook is going to come out and it's nothing. <coughs> so, again, you think to yourself how to win, and the first move is just like, I mean, even today, even from looking backwards, it's like unbelievable. The move is bishop f5. What? Are you serious? It's like, I, I, even now that I know the solution, I'm still like almost, it's almost like seeing a movie where the hero is about to die, and you've seen it, you know he's going to die, and you're like, man, maybe he's not going to die, but he still died. So it's like, you see the move, you know the move is still unbelievable that this move is still played. Bishop f5, like such, can you think of a more counterintuitive move? 
Like in a kid's class, if somebody goes bishop g6, you just like roll your eyes, yeah, we know that. But even they wouldn't play bishop f5, it's like it's so <laughs> crazy. Just incredible. Well, the good news is that he pretty much had to take because there's no more f5, I stopped f5. So what else is there? And now, king c5. Again, not too many moves. Rook g8, rook h8, I'm just gonna check you. And king d8, king d8, then I'm just gonna go king d6. And again, rook is lost, or mate. So gotta play f6. Then I'm gonna go here. <coughs> again, not that many moves to play. Rook g8. Um, if rook f7, that's a problem because rook a check, the rook just took away the last escape square. So rook here, king here. Threatening mate and rook. If you go king d8, then you lose a rook. If you go here, then here. So aesthetic. I mean, this is like, take a look at this first position one more time. This is more for me than for you. So I'm looking at it and I'm like, what? Bishop f5, what the heck? It's like fantastic. So, yeah. Okay, they also show other lines, like if here, 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 here. Nothing, rook f6. So, dead draw. However, bishop f5. This is really fantastic. All right. And our last position for the day is going to be this one. Again, resourcefulness in the end game. This is how I call it. You look at this position, and the first inclination is that white is just lost. It looks lost. I mean, the king is just not coming closer. My king is just playing Pac-Man, eating the pawn, eating the knight. Even if you second knight for one pawn, <coughs> I have another pawn plus a bishop. Has to be lost. However, no. Somehow white draws this. Incredible. So take a good look at just, you already know the answer? Have you seen it before? You uh, No? Try it. I figured out the last one too. You figured out the last one? Yeah. Star. Okay, so king e3. The point is, if knight g3, king h2, here, here. Prosaically winning, yeah? So got to be resourceful, so king e3. Okay, so takes. Still looking even worse than before. Of course, king f2. Any other move, knight f2, g3, just winning the pawn. So king f2, and the point is that after this, here, Zugzwang. If you could say pass without allowing white to pass, you'll be in good shape because king f2, king h2. However, no, that doesn't how it, not how it works. If the bishop moves, I'm just gonna take your pawns Pac-Man style. They take g4, then take g5. And after king g1, stalemate. No, I meant the other Pac-Man. And here it's just stalemate. Just fantastic beauty of chess. Really, really nice. You look, I mean, if you saw this position on, in the tournament here and you looked at it, oh, you would say, come on, Black is winning. Obviously he's winning. But sometimes just resourcefulness, just to think about something that is, really you think about it impossible. How are you gonna get stalemate in this position where everybody has like a million moves? But you combine two ideas, paralyzing the double pawns and the bad position of the bishop and the stalemate. So after here, here, here. If you have to let go of both pawns. It's funny, you don't just lose one pawn. Sometimes you, you lose one and you get to defend the other. Here, no. You lose both. And alternatively, I draw this way. So I think this is all I have to show you guys today. Let me see if I skipped something. I don't think I have. This concludes the lecture then. That's all I have today. Mm -hmm.